I got called out here on an emergency. Remember from the earlier video, I finished this just this afternoon. He called me back up and told me that the AC was just coming on for a second. When he would rev it up a little bit, the AC would turn off. Well, there's nothing in the circuit that works off the idle speed or anything like that. It should not be cutting off like that. Uh, the refrigerant level is okay. There's no problems there. What I discovered was it was kicking out way too soon. So there's an electronic device, the thermistor in the air box. So this controls the temperature when it's gonna cut in and out. See that little metal line right there? And it hooks up to the wires right there. There's a thermistor right there. So that determines at what temperature. It was working fine. Now it's not, now it started like it went out of calibration after about 40 minutes, an hour of use, and all of a sudden it started kicking out too soon. He has a little leak of water down here too, and he doesn't have his line wrapped. So what I did, he's gonna have to order a new one that's calibrated correctly, because this is a, they have a hole right here, and it's factory set, and it should work right, should is that. I do find some problems with vintage air. I've had problems brand new out of the box with the misters a couple times, and I've had three units in the last two years where the expansion valves were stuck in the closed, you know, in a low meter position, so it starves it for refrigerant. Um, yeah, like I said before, I would like to be able to change the vintage air units over to the square H style expansion valves, get rid of these expansion valves, or I would put in a commercial uh, like a residential one made by Sportland so I could dial in my own size head and everything like that and change my superheat and I would take this little number 10 line and turn it to a number 12 line uh, there's a few things like I said and I and I would also on these bigger front grills of cars I would get condensers that are meant for an SUV with dual air conditioning and you know what you can do you can literally put a vintage air unit you could put two vintage air units and you put one inside the trunk and you could have you bring off the air from down below in the side panels and you could put vents in the back that blow air forward and you could have an evaporator in the rear like a big SUV or a van and you would have your evaporator up front have your bigger condenser a good fan system and you would have a killer ass system um, yeah that's about it it seems like this is doing it I just pulled it out a little bit and I'm trying to push it in and pull it out and I'm trying to find the right position and then we'll put a little RTV or a little dum dum or something to stick it in place so it doesn't vibrate back out or vibrate back in because right now I'm just fooling it and making sure the line doesn't freeze so I get I don't want to get uh, too low of a superheat and freeze out the uh, get liquid back to the compressor even though these are pretty damn bulletproof compressors. Uh, and you can see the thing's pissing all over the ground. Good water flow. Ow, shit. Damn, that hurt. Thank God I got sunglasses on top of my head. Um, yeah, we're good here. That's a really high super heat. I don't like that. Uh, but that's why I said... I would customize the systems, I would do my own expansion valve, I would change that case a little modification. There's a lot of things I could do to the system to make it work better, especially in desert climates like Arizona and Texas. discharge out of the compressor now watch this drop this is why I know there's another the compression ratio well it's not too too bad because it's low on the high side but check this out I'm on the discharge of the compressor right there now look at the liquid line uh, was 172 yeah that was 172 degrees now let's come over here now I'm on the liquid line uh, it just kicked out yeah it just kicked out so now I'm on the liquid line, and we're going to read the liquid line now. 
A condenser should not have more than a 50 degree drop, especially a high efficiency micro channel. But these are cheap micro channels. These are not good ones like a Denso or anything. They're micro channel, but they could do a lot better. You see the fin count? The fin count on here is about 14 to 16 fins per inch. That's really mediocre. That was good for 15 years ago. Uh, I would put a 21 to 22 fin count on here. And, and like I say, get a Denso. Get a, get a Denso off of a van or a big SUV off a of GMC or something like that. Dual air conditioning. These universal cheap condensers, they're manufactured. They buy them by the whole shipping container load. These things are only about $20 a piece. Uh, I kid you not. They sell it to you for $150 or $300, but they're about $20 a piece. Okay, it's running. It's hot as hell. So that's 172 degrees. So that's 72 degrees. We got 60, uh, 86, 87, 97. That's 23 degrees plus 70 to 70. 90 to 94. Is that 94? That's a 94 degree, uh, 94 degree pressure drop, temperature drop across the TD across the entrance is 94. That's almost a hundred degree drop, and it's a cool day. That is too high of a pressure drop across that condenser. This is not. The thing is, is it's an indestructible compressor. That's why they could get away with this stuff. They could undersize these con condensers when they have hot rods with small little front ends and the compressor still lives. It gives you some cooling. But uh, yeah, that's too much of a drop, but it's working now. All right, let's see how this goes.